Let's look at the Middle East this morning. President Joe Biden says that the U.S. will not lift sanctions on Iran in an effort to bring the country back to the negotiating table over its nuclear program. Iran has reportedly been enriching uranium to weapons-grade levels, violating the 2015 international nuclear deal, which, of course, President Trump withdrew the United States from in 2018. Iran's supreme leader has doubled down over the weekend. He says he will only return to compliance on nuclear enrichment once the sanctions are lifted. Joining me right now is Fox News senior strategic analyst, General Jack Keane. General, always a pleasure. Thanks very much for being here. A little game of cat and mouse here. They're not going to stop with the enrichment until the sanctions are off, the sanctions are in, unless they stop the enrichment. Your, your reaction. Well, first of all, I think that's a positive development. The Biden administration certainly recognizes that the leverage that they have are the sanctions that the Trump administration has imposed on Iran. They are crippling Iran. They've also caused significant social unrest inside the country against the regime, not against the United States or our allies. So, yes, we have leverage here and we should use it. The other thing is the Abraham Accords, and the United, that is the normalizations of relationships and the coming together of the Arab states with the Israelis. Those two points give us significant leverage. My concern here is the team that's going to be dealing with Iran is the same team that negotiated the 2014-2015 original nuclear deal, which I think most observers recognize is fundamentally flawed. This administration wants to improve that deal. That's a good thing. I just hope they're going to be tough enough. They certainly were not the first time in 2014 and 2015. All right. Well, well, we'll have to wait and see on that. The president has said he wants to return to the nuclear deal, uh, but they're pushing back at least to see if this enrichment continues. Let's turn to China. General Hong Kong media tycoon and, of course, a friend of this program, Jimmy Lai, was denied bail in his national security case this morning. Lai was arrested, as you know, back in December, first charged for fraud for allegedly violating leasing terms. Uh, that was just thrown in there. And then later he was charged under the national security law on suspicion of colluding with foreign forces. General King, your reaction, we have not seen Jimmy Lai in a long time. He's been imprisoned. And this is the fate of anybody who pushes back on the Chinese Communist Party, right? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, <clears throat> Jimmy Lai, in full disclosure, a personal friend of mine, uh, one of the bravest people I've ever met in my lifetime, uh, and certainly is is very pro-American and committed to uh, democracy inside of Hong Kong. Uh, he's in jail essentially for those beliefs and the fact that he was willing to stand among the protesters and just stand there quietly and also um, with no physical demonstration whatsoever other than his presence. That, that's what he's in jail for because he's a symbol. He's independently wealthy and no other person of his means has ever stood in those streets and defied the communist regime. So he, he's quite a symbol uh, for Hong Kong and, and for the free world writ large. I think what happened here is the higher court overruled the lower court that had released him for a week around Christmas. And now he's, he's been back in jail. He was only out of jail for a week. And eventually he will be tried. And, and it's likely, given that they're using the national security laws as the basis upon which to adjudicate his situation, that they will probably impose some kind of jail sentence on Jimmy, unfortunately. Well, I mean, how does the Chinese Communist Party keep getting away with all of these atrocities? You know, you've got two U.S. Navy carrier groups conducting joint exercises in the South China Sea just days after a U.S. warship sailed near Chinese-controlled islands in the disputed waters. The Navy says these drills are aimed at increasing command and control capabilities, while a Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson is calling the moves a show of force, General. We also heard from the World Health Organization. They're trying to get the world to believe that the coronavirus did not start in a Wuhan lab, which we have evidence. Otherwise, we know that's not true, and they're rolling over for the Chinese Communist Party. We've got the CCP moving into Hong Kong with these new laws, you know, bullying their neighbors in the South China Sea, bullying Taiwan, disappearing Jack Ma. And then you had President Biden the other night on, on CBS saying he's going to do things differently than what President Trump did uh, in regards to China. Your thoughts? Well, first of all, uh, the presence of the two strike groups is a good thing. The, the, the USS Nimitz is on its way back from a 10-month tour in the Middle East, and its home port is Bremerton, Washington. 
So certainly our commanders are using that navigation home to also deploy that force in the South China Sea along with the strike group, the USS Teddy Roosevelt, which we're all very familiar with because of the outbreak of COVID. But this is the right thing to do. Maria, we have a real problem in the Indo-Pacific region militarily because we're outgunned. The PRC, the Chinese, have more ships, more airplanes, and the largest missile arsenal in the world deployed in the Indo-Pacific region. And because of the erosion of our military budgets over time and the rapid development of the Chinese military, most recently under President Xi, they, our, our deterrence has eroded, and we've got to put it back together. This is just part yeah, of General. what is needed. Okay, but I mean, we're outgunned right now, General. Are we going to? Where are we going to be in five years after uh, Americans and the world invest in Chinese companies tied to the, the the Chinese Communist Party's military? This was the reason that the Trump administration said, "Don't invest in these companies. Don't help expand and fund the Chinese military." Right? If we're outgunned now, oh, yeah. what? Where are we in a year? Where are we in five years? Where are we in ten years? Well, we've got to reposition military capability as soon as possible into that region. I'm hopeful that the Biden administration moves rapidly on that under the leadership of Secretary Austin. There's no doubt that we need to decouple some of our business entities that operate inside of China because they are contributing, as you indicated, to the development of Chinese military capacity. And that's, that's a mistake. And those, those exactly. companies have got to be identified as well as those, those industries. China is seeking military dominance, economic dominance in the region, and also a, a political and diplomatic dominance. All of this has taken place yeah. comprehensively. I hope this administration puts together a very comprehensive whole-of-government plan with our allies. It'll take a little bit of effort to get to the details of it to push back on the PRC. They've identified it as our yep. number one strategic objective. And, and w the proof is going to be in the details and the plans. And most importantly, their ability yep. and willingness and resolve to confront China. That will be the test. Absolutely. We're watching it and we're going to spotlight it as, uh, as needed. General, thank you, sir. General Jack Keane joining us there. Stay with us. We'll be right back.